Um, on Western Fed, if any of the members want to attend Western Fed, um, contact Tom Howard. And you have to do it quickly, and we need to make our own reservations for that. So uh, the next member meeting will be Joyce Barrett. And uh, it will be April 5th. She will present on using color and composition to bring interest and excitement to your paintings. Bring yourself plus a sketchbook, watercolors, etc. if you want to work along with Joyce. Um, and she does amazing abstract paintings, if any of you have seen her paintings. Um, she does a great job. Um, this Friday is the awards for the Two Star Signature Show up at Eccles. Um, the, the gallery scroll will be from five to eight. The awards will be handed out at six. And uh, it would be nice if we could get a lot of people up there to um, uh, support the show and support Eccles. The Stan Miller workshop is coming up uh, May the 2nd through the 6th. So look on our website for information about that. And uh, the Carl Purcell workshop is tomorrow and the next day. And I think it's full. So um, let's see. <laughs> Um, there'll be uh, no sketching with Bess Ann um, for the rest of the year, that information. And um, let's see. I'm making sure I've got everything semi covered. We got a really nice thank you card from one of the scholarship winners. I thought I'd read this. Uh, Dear Watercolor Society, wanted to thank you so much for the generous scholarship I received. I love working with watercolor. It's a honor. If I improve my skills, I will be able to give back to the society in a meaningful way. Thank you again, Emma Euler, Mountain Crest High School and then her email. So that's very nice. So.
me. Why am Hello? Uh, we can't hear. Yeah, is there anybody there that's monitoring this? And Tuesday night, she had a race from seven, about 7.05 to 7.40, where she can eat her supper and then go back and teach more students. She's a remarkable piano teacher. She graduated from the Royal Academy of Music in Scotland. Hi, Scotland. That's true. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I I support her by having her supper ready. And the reason I'm here tonight uh, is I'm, I'm teaching a workshop tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, so I made a big pot of uh, soup, of uh, chicken noodle soup. For her, have while I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Many ways, you'd probably rejoice if you did. Because <laughs> she has a really good organizational mind. They say, uh, on, on deeply clear, to be able to do this. Thursday and then let's see. How do you do that? <laughs> I have to remember to say May, that's after April. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. so I, she has an amazing memory and I have a, a visual memory. I can remember things I've seen. I do a drawing of something and I can remember for the rest of my life. But remembering that I have to do this on Thursday night. That's difficult. And so I know it's frustrating for her. So I try to support her in the things that she does. All right. Uh, as a testament to my phenomenal memory, I did a drawing on watercolor paper, stretched the paper, got it all ready to go, and left it on my painting table. <laughs> I have a little list there. I went down the list and checked off everything, took it out of the van, but that was not on my list. <laughs> so I had to redraw this. <laughs> a little bit embarrassing, but so um, it is. Let's see. And I, I brought some paper towels too that I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, I don't see them. What did they do with them? I was going to clean my palette off, but uh, oh, well, maybe they're still out in the van. Well, are there some around? Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's a bit of a messy palette, but that's. That's all right. I'm just going to do some light washes over the whole thing, leaving light where I want it, which is down through here. What I do is I, I do a value study before. <coughs> this is in using art graph. If you don't know what that is. Oh, thank you. I <laughs> this in. Well, I see. This this called art graph, and it's just a, a water soluble graphite, and it's it takes drawing a step closer to painting because <laughs> you do it with a brush. So I do all these little studies with so, and I've left a bunch up here. If anybody wants to take a look at them and see how they're done, this one I went over it with watercolor. Top of it. But most of it's just for the dark and light. So I've got this planned out of the shape of light of dark and then the dark moving up here and light moving down there. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to just leave some lights uh, a bit here and dancing up through there. 
to a sort of a column of lights. And the rest is all going to be colored. Just need to take a deep breath. And pray to the God of demos. <laughs> well, you never know, you know. I could hear you prayer sometimes. The prayer I've seen that is never answered is the one where you're just you got your brush and you're just going like please God <laughs> make something good happen. That one I've never seen answered. So if I were you, I wouldn't bother. Once you put one stroke down. That sort of clarifies things and, and it gets rid of the you know, fear that accompanies the first part of the painting. And have some soft edges there. Some, this is going to get darker here. Okay, I thought that was my interest. All ready to apologize. So that's my nice there. This is what I love about watercolor. You can put water next to a color, and things happen that just and I tell us about it. I was born with oil paintings. I, I do oil paintings, but they kind of bore me in that, in that uh, I put a stroke down and nothing happened. And it's like I'm waiting for something to happen that doesn't. So I want to get this covered as quickly as possible with variations of color. And then mainly I'm, I'm going to be using ultramarine blue. And uh, and this yellow ochre. And that little sienna. Let's see. And quite a bit of water so that it. Ouch. A little bit of uh, indentation in your watercolor. Carl, <laughs> is there a red in here? Is it that person that's just Sienna? That's just Sienna. But actually, you don't see in there yet. Oh, and uh, there's, I, I may have picked up a little transparent fire orange. Now, let's see. Oops. All Daniel Smith except for Horizon Blue. Now, I've got a drawing here, believe it or not, but uh, for me, the drawing is just there for. Uh, a guide. <laughs> it's a little cold, messy. Thanks for the guidelines. What is that? Pirates. Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. Just guidelines, messy. I can't paint between the lines. You know. I never was good at that one as a kid. They they gave us um, you know coloring books or something. I just never was good at that. I'm gonna just get that right on here. And I want to have some really broken lights down in here.
I prefer working in a, in a way that I don't know what I'm doing. If I try to follow a plan, absolutely, and know exactly what I'm doing, it gets, um, like it doesn't have a life of its own anymore. Then I'm going to dry this and work back into it. No, I don't want all this here. Look at this. Turn it off these lines. Yeah. I'm going to leave some whites there that I can pick up later. If I have the same colors working all through the painting, they will hopefully be unified. When I was a student, Remember, they gave us a list of all the principles and elements of design. You know, the, the elements, of course, didn't change a whole lot. Uh, line shape, value, color, texture. But sometimes they were an author that tried to be a little more creative and throw mass and other things in there. Um, but basically, the, the building block of what you Work with. And it's line, shape, color, value, and texture. I have that's the visual elements. And this has got values, it's got color. It doesn't have any line work yet, but I mean, so that would come. Okay. There, now. Okay, now I want to dry that. And if you'll pardon me for a moment, I'll just get this down to where I can work on it. Time to do this. You get blooms, you know. I like uh, working also with the, the warm and the cool together. The weird thing is. Uh, in all the classes I took, I don't remember anybody ever talking about edges. We had design class where uh, we did little abstract things or unity by being all geometric or all organic. And, uh, but they never, I, I, I couldn't see the bridge between that and doing things. Realistic painting. That's what I want to do with it. Um, oh, cool. Oh. Sounds awful, doesn't it? But um, we never did. And yet, one of the characteristics of that other shape is that it's edgy in a major way. And like I said, all sharp edges, then you've got too much attention everywhere. They then talked about uh, value contrast is, is greater because there's light against dark with a sharp edge. If it's light against dark and the edge is blurred, it's not as eye catching. It's not as it doesn't pop the eye of it. Then he talks about this, 
seems like they left a lot for us to discover. It's one of the ways. You know, very similar to one of the Frenchmen, you know, speaking as a pretty good man, walked into the exhibit of the MFA candidate. Oh, wow. They were so good. I just blew me away. And I looked at what they were they did and I thought, maybe I should go into archaeology. Geology really is something other than that because I have no talent. And then I, I realized if I wanted to do this and not have any talent, oops, something else I'm capable of. It's going to be a bird up there, a fat one. Anyway, if, if I was going to do this, I, I was going to have to, to uh, make up some ground really fast. So I started on outside of class. I went to the library and I started looking at paintings and books. And then I started to realize, well, we will make some of them really strong. It really catch my eyes. The dark and light patterns, you know. So I started going there with pages with just my student ID traced around with a whole bunch of rectangles. And then I started just doing value studies of those. And uh, I think that's in my book, the pages of those. And I turned the books upside down and squinted so that I wouldn't see what it was. You know, just I would just see the pattern. And so I nobody ever told me about squinting, but that's how I had to see it. If I you know, had to squint to see it blurred out, so I didn't get involved in what the subject was. And uh, that taught me more about composition than probably any. Then I started looking at sports magazines, turning them upside down, looking for photographs, squinting and a couple of pieces of L shaped mat board, finding sections in the photographs that really popped, you know, it was a good combination. Of Dark, light, and, and middle value. And middle value. And yeah, so that, that taught me <laughs> I am because I squinted. <laughs> I was at Utah State. Okay, now where to go after this? After I get this set up like this, where do I start? I like to start right in my focal area, which is going to be right with the. By the way, I did this. Um, I I think it's in here. Well, maybe it's not. One of these sketchbooks. Uh, this is a habit I strongly recommend. The sketchbook habit, taking this with you because your camera will record its trip. It won't record yours. And that may sound a little funny, but it's not meant to be. Honestly, this is the record of my trips. And, uh, you know, some of them, uh, I all went out to the desert of San, and the San Rafael. I just did a, uh, there's probably four pages here of just drawing from, from that little trip of each. I walked around the corner, there's a new arrangement of rocks, like some Japanese gardener had gone there. It's amazing. So, uh, but I also took photographs, and you know, those photographs were useless. They are really, I, I like that one. Why did I take this? No idea, but I have no question when I looked at the drawing why I did it. Because in the drawing, I eliminated all the stuff I didn't like. And focus on what I like. And so it really recorded my experience there. My camera is a, is a recorder. That's it. it. It's very faithful. And your, your camera can do what you cannot do that is, to record every minute detail faithfully. But you can do what it can do. That is, you can have ideas about it. You can think about it. You can feel something. You can respond. It can't respond, it just records flat. 
no emotion, no nothing. It's spark um, squared. <laughs> it's just there's no emotion. So uh so with that said, I'm gonna go into this. Uh, from Devon, England, uh, went to Dartmouth. They have this castle at the end of the point where actually what it was for it wasn't a castle for some king to live in, it was a defensive castle. And uh, because they did a lot of um, pirating <laughs> there, uh, they would come home with the loot and they had to have a way to defend the harbor, you know, and whoever might be chasing them. So they had a, this castle here, and then on the other side of land coming out, they had a, a, another little house that was a cranky cable, and they had a big chain that went across the inlet. And they just raise that chain and take out the bottom of any ship. Pretty clever. But anyway, I was out there with that and I took the went on a little drop down a trail and wow, this view, that was perfect. At least it is my sketchbook. But I took some photos of it one for perfect. I'm going to just put in the dark pattern of of the foliage there. There. Look at the edge you get this out. Just pressing it down. That's better than I can do. And I want some sky holes in that. I want an interesting shape. And I think I'll change the more blue grain. I have a drawing over there somewhere. And I, I paint half the time with my eyes half closed, squinting so that I don't get involved with the little detail. So I see the whole shape instead of just that little cake I'm working on. And I think I want to put some color in that. Not just green. And the dark defines the light. Yeah, All right, I'm going to do some line work in that too. So. All right.
And I hope you've prayed along with me with this one. Splash is good water from the beginning And not all churches. The trick is to make the water straw look like it was spontaneous, even though it was very well thought out. Places. Well, this is well thought out of what I can do. Maybe I should just lighten that up a little bit right there. You know, the most absolutely way. Maybe a thought. Maybe. Sometimes those thoughts come to me and just respond to them. Every now and then a thought comes to me and I'll do it, and then it's a bad idea. It's happened to you too, huh? <laughs> Okay, cool. Not alone. If I just take a dense brush and go from that to the needle, in order for the water to splash up against the rock. Oh. I want a little more of that. I put the towel in the brush a little bit more. Okay. okay. So that looks like white. I'd like to color them a bit white. So that's my plan. I try to refer to that. My preferable, my preference, my, the way I like to work is um, I go out and do it. I take a photograph of what I'm looking at. I might want that. And I do a drawing and I bring the drawing back. The drawing is a step away from what was actually there. I'm, I already done some editing. I've decided what I didn't like. And, you know, then I do the painting. And it's another step away from the drawing. So really, uh, it, this is absolute truth. But my camera records the absolute truth. So, oh. I don't know how many of you have ever taken some photographs that you thought, oh, no, what did I put that in? Anybody? It's probably about 75, 80 percent of the photo you take. You're going, I'm just not inspired by it. Just... And yet, when you took it, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, that made it. And I'll tell you where I learned that. Was it Mesa Verde? We went there as a family and we 
this is what they're doing. And I was so excited. Wow. The Holy Spirit is ah, unreal. So uh, I took about three rolls, 36 exposure rolls of slide film. Click, 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 click. click. I'm photographing everything. Little, little things, little details of my whole. And I got home and I sent the film off. You have at that time you had to, you know, wait for two weeks to get it back. And I got it back and I just could not get into it. I looked at all the slides, I put them up, I put them up upside down. I just I just couldn't get inspired. I did I think beyond painting for all those slides. And I thought that was a waste. Next time we go, I'm going to take some better photos <laughs> and learn. So the next time we went, I uh, did the same thing. I had a whole bunch of slides, got home, looked at them, and I couldn't do it. Third time, I said, okay, this time I'm not taking the camera. So I'll take my sketchbook. That's it. So that time, I was able to come up with the, I did 14 paintings from the drawings I did that trip. And uh, that taught me a valuable lesson about which one is more capable of gathering things for painting. A camera for me. And I don't want to suck this egg as long as you know So they're not all hard edge. If you have any questions while I'm doing this, feel free to ask, except for the you know, names of colors. That's really hard to answer right in the middle of it. And I have to shift gears over to actual names, words, and stuff. But if I'm talking about what I'm doing, yeah, I can handle it. Yes, this is Arches 140-pound drop. It's become my favorite circle. I like it even better than 300 pounds. I, I think because there's, there's more sizing in the 300 pounds. Than in the um, what was I saying? The more sizing, and and so it, uh, it's a little less, a little uh, less absorbent. Yeah, you can lift quite easily, but I don't have to say all the things I just mentioned with this. Uh, I usually plan on leaving quite a few flights. Because I know their true nature. And that is when you turn your back, they disappear. And it's funny, but true, right? You go to the bathroom, come back. Why am I so white? You look at my drawing, you can't figure it out. Why? 
happen to it? This is a recent small amount of the Zavin. A little more middle value. They look, I always plan on a, a drawing about a full step lighter because it will. Might as well plan on it. It's going to happen. It was just right there, but somehow you get to have the ones in the same place in the water. Okay, how far do I want to go? Change that. <coughs> Normally, I'm making all these decisions with nobody watching. It's a lot less stressful. Yeah, this is the rock formation coming down here and then we're going out the You don't get castle in this painting? No. The castle was at my back, so you can't see it. No, I don't. The corner of that brush works really well. Oddly, it was not in a watercolor class that I learned how to use a brush. It was in a brush lettering class. Hold on down, twist. Yeah. Uh, I try to get stuff that will sit in the background with that. Yeah. New Age is good. Uh, I, I never listened to Chopin when I was making because Chopin has this way of making you on the stop. <laughs> Something he does between the notes. Uh, he, he wrote a lot of music with top notes, the space in between is pregnant with sound. Yeah. He just brings out like honey. <laughs> And I can't listen to that and, and keep painting. That. 
So it's going to be, you know, something that doesn't attract much attention. In the now here I'm thinking, I want this to swing around and drag the eye out here. So it's not just arbitrary. And then I'm going to have some rock formations over here. So not quite as dark, not quite as golden. Did you do this uh, before, or is this just kind of thing? Oh, I just try to listen to the news on the side. No, I, that, that was my plan from the, from the outset. I did a drawing up. I found it in my sketch. Let me have to go my sketch because it was like zero outside, you know. And uh, so I did go through the sketchbook with me. Oh, I never painted that. I shouldn't. That's pretty. That's nice. The hardest part is to. Be more like nature and repeat a motif without doing the exact same thing. Repeat with variety. That's, that's against our nature because nature always does that, it repeats everything. Every motif will be repeated with infinite variety. That's why every every uh, snowflake is different. Every limb on a tree is different than every other limb on a tree. Some are close, but there are no two exactly alike. It's not fascinating. You know, uh, I remember when. Science claims that because of in unbelievable arrogance, man. Well, nature is chaos and we've been ordered. No, actually, the opposite is true. If you look at the news, you know that we bring chaos. The nature is already organized. And when we do organize things, we do it. With unbelievable order. We build fences, uh, they're utilitarian, and every fence post in the same distance apart and fell out. You know, and then gradually nature has a way of making it, relaxing it, has, directs a cow to go up and rub against it, scratch the edge, and the pole leads this way. And then other cows on the other side, the main one the other way, and, you know, and then the wind blows, and then get this beautiful rhythm. And then farmer comes along and oh, puts another post in there in a sturdy this, you know. <laughs> and after a while, it becomes this rhythmical, beautiful thing. It's linear pen. And some of that I'm going to calm down with a little more. It's just not all striking and bright. It's not for every little. If all those are hard edges, they'll screen for attention. And I want to move to that, the dark against the light. When that's dry enough, then I can see There. Yeah. 
thirsty brush. That's your tool. Boy. Okay. <coughs> uh, somewhere up here, so I forgot a couple of spots that are really left there. And I don't want that to bleed in. Oh, that's not right. That was close. <laughs> Well, that area that you just did the brush on, was it like half dry? That area? Right here? No, it has a couple little puddles of it. No, no, like, Oh, down here? Oh, did I use the thirsty brush on? Yeah, uh, I just put a stroke down there, so it, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was reading in that. Uh, have you heard the or maybe you already have it, the book All of Prima by Richard Schmidt. Probably one of the finest books on painting I've ever read. But, uh, he, he was talking about watercolor and versus oil painting. He said the uh, edges in particular are a cakewalk. He said, but with watercolor, you have to you have to be aware of how much water is in the brush, how wet how the paper is. Uh, and so many things there that, and the only thing that will give you that knowledge is to, this experience. It's miles on the brush. So that's why you have to, you have to put those miles in. If you don't, if you expect the next one to be a masterpiece, you're expecting the wrong thing. <laughs> I gave up the masterpiece complex a long time ago. I I had a, a piece of uh, 300 pound paper, really rough. It was handmade Indian paper. I couldn't give it to me. I'm saving that for you know, that But I finally said, I've had it for two or three years. I might as well use it. So I had this drawing I'd done up in Austria. And I thought, this is actually good something for this. I'll use it on this. And I got it all ready, got the drawing done, got the, the papers all ready. And I took that first big brush stroke and went down and just, it's like working on water paper. <laughs> just sucked everything out of that brush. Whoa. I've got to redo my whole thinking process here because this is not going to be working the way I usually work. So yeah, that taught me a lot about masterpiece idea. A dream. Okay. I don't want to be cool. You know what's sad? Oh, this one. I just put this one. This is. Long round Princeton. So I try that one out. These, I love those. They're, yeah, that's good for now. Every time you fall in love with something like that, they quit making it. My favorite brush for years was a Lang Nickel combo. I wrote to them, by the way, I said, hey, this is a watercolor brush, and you've got them listed as a, you know, in your old catalogs as a lettering brush. And that's an it's a tremendous watercolor brush. Reissue it as a, a watercolor brush, please. Didn't even get a reply. 
Heck, I got replied from the Walmart president. <laughs> and these guys wouldn't even respond. Okay, I think I want to go all the way. Oh, there's nothing in it. <laughs> yeah, they built a Walmart in Ephraim down by us. And finally, ah, good, a place I can get flowers for now, you know. Finally, go over there when they open. No flowers. I said, well, all the Walmarts up north have cut flowers. Oh, well, they're different. You know, we, we're not in that class, so we can't have. Then who decided that? There aren't any places down here for flowers. So that's, you know, it's out of, you know, it's mean offices. Well, that's just stupid. He said, well, you can write to the president of the company if you want. I said, yeah, give me So, and I wrote him, I said, there's no flowers within 90 miles of here. And you don't give these people the right to carry flowers? It just doesn't make any sense. And I got a reply back. Thank you very much for your comment, and we're going to change that. They're going to be able to carry flowers. Could have blown me over. All right. <laughs> no, they didn't go that far. <laughs> that was an awful. This is the ocean, so it's going to be a long. Oh, there yeah, there's this ocean. <laughs> Where's what? I was looking, I was climbing up on this, there were stairs going down to here, this little cold, and I was part way up the stairs going to cross that. So, and meanwhile, my ocean was drying. <laughs> Put where? Oh, yeah, every week I get new flowers for the music room. Almost have to after that. <laughs> So once again, eyes are once half closed, looking at it through my eyelashes, I can see that much better. I see the whole thing. There, oh, maybe the other one. Oh. 
There are no guarantees. And I haven't paid my water color insurance for years. Come to me in case one goes wrong. I'll resolve that later. One thing you have to just wait to sit afterwards. That's too strident for me. And we're going to add some texture to the wall. What time is it? I, I forget. And we go till 10. See, what I do at home is I, I set a timer. Okay, I'm going to put this in the oven. Because I know if I get involved in the thing, time becomes something from another world. See, that's how you tell if it's dry yet. If it leaves a fingerprint, <laughs> you know it's not. This is just clear. What does the word calligraphy mean? Somebody knows? Well, it means beautiful writing. And it's referred to the kind of thick and thin line they used to do in Canada. Only now, these kids hardly know how to print. Do you know, somebody told me they, they asked the kids to sign at half of them, couldn't sign their name. They didn't have a signature. They had to print their names on them. Is this sad or what? Wow. No, I think it's really sad that, that years ago they stopped having students in China had to learn how to use a brush. They had to do all the calligraphy was part of it. Now they, they do Chinese with a ballpoint pen. That's sad. It's not as sad as what the 
government of the agency. There's a trick of thinking, okay, I did that from that line now. I can't do that again. Every brush stroke, every limb has to be different. Okay, there. If I start to get the detail built right there, then I'll know how far not to go with the rest of it. So let's see. I would like. Some stone, maybe even get rid of the hair. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to spike that thing. When I was in high school, my brother, who was a floral student, and really good, he said to me, you not only talk to yourself, you answer yourself. And I said, well, it's the only way I can be assured of getting an intelligent conversation out of it. We argued over quite a few things. But that's what you're, you know, I mean, I've read the rule book. That's what siblings are supposed to do. Especially brothers. The sisters, I didn't have any sisters. Did they fight too? Really? I thought they were supposed to be more genteel. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's to show you the different ways that the brain works. My brother was straightforward, he could memorize all the stuff he needed for all the tests. And I was like, uh, some of that stuff is interesting, some of it I remember the interesting stuff. I'm sort of brushed off <laughs> that I didn't find that interesting. Consequently, I did not graduate with a full formal I didn't find a high school that interesting. But he, uh, he came to me with an article on the, the universe, the solar system. And he said, this is fascinating, you've got to read this. I said, okay. Then he checked with me a couple of days later. Did you read it? I said, yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> Yeah, I did. All right. If you read how many miles is it to Mars? I don't know. See, you didn't read it. I did. Well, how many miles is it to Jupiter? I said, I don't know. I said, oh, you don't see anything about it? I said, yeah, it's 93 million miles to the sun. I don't know why I remember that, but I do. He says, so what did you get out of it? Oh, man, he's not going to like this. I said, there's a hell of a lot of space out there. <laughs> and he threw his arms up and said, I give up. And walked off. Uh, what? I mean, why tell me how many miles I, it is to Mars? What does that tell you? 
means it's a long ways away. That's why that's why you tell you. They tell you how many miles it is, so you know it's a long ways, and there's nothing but space between here and there. I don't know. <laughs> so and it was years later he said to me, uh, you know, I always admired the way your brain worked. I said, what? <laughs> no, you didn't. I said, yeah. He said, I, I got so involved in all the little details. I've missed the big picture, and you always saw the big picture. You missed all the little stuff. Well, that's true. You have to if you're going to be an artist. You have to look at the big picture. Yeah. That's why I swim. Look at the whole thing. So it's just doing what I want them to do, leading into there. I'm going to add a few little. Oops, that's the. I guess I'm not going to. What's that? Your eyes are your eyes are straight. No. Well, thank you. Well, I've never looked that close. I've got focus down here. Yeah, it's just. What did he do? Yeah, he he ended up straight enough teaching students with learning disabilities. Yeah, it's not, not something I would be able to do. Yeah. Well, I think. Yeah, he think we call it disability, uh, learning disability, because we just don't learn the same way. You know, and uh, I think I could have learned advanced algebra if they presented it differently, but they didn't. And consequently, I I, I got A's and B's in beginning algebra. But that, they always give you a page of the problems and then another page that you had to solve it. But you just use that formula for these and you could do that. But when they got to those word problems and you had to create your own matrix for them. So if Fred can roll, I still remember this one. If Fred can roll upstream at one mile an hour, and the water is flowing downstream at one and a half miles per hour. How fast could the thread grow in still water? And I tried to work that out and apply. I just couldn't get it, you know. And, I, and that was the first question on the quiz. And at the end of this period, that's where I still was. And I realized I'm failing this quiz. So I, I wrote down. Um, the answer depends on a lot of variables. Did he just eat before he was growing? Did his girlfriend break up? Does he have a headache? If he just got in trouble with his parents, he's probably going to do badly. If everything is going swimmingly, he might do all right. But I didn't get credit for that. <laughs> not and not a single point. <laughs> I'm gonna have to dry this because I can't work on that right now. So you can see this the construct of it. But I need this to connect with that more. And I didn't realize that in my drawing. I didn't uh, thought I'd show you a few little things I did with the texture in the rock. What I noticed is uh, mostly about rocks is that. I've studied the, the way they crack, the way they, 
the surfaces are, so they're not smooth you know, there's, there's a lot of textural variations in it. And if I try to do it uh, really quite deliberately, it, it won't work too well. If I take a brush with a little water, and it's going to dance a little bit. And then take a paper towel off of the excess and then rub it. I get some variations on there, but or another thing is to take a little water, spat it on it. I have to watch how much spat it on that to that. And then a little color. I left some of that off. I get a little to watch it on too much, just enough so that I can come back into it with some dark underneath. Those things up to do it. Just enough to break up the surface. Not strong contrast, just staying within the, the confines of that limited value range. And I found that anything I put on the surface has got to be. Just a little bit darker or a little bit lighter than the surface. Otherwise, it jumps off of the surface and becomes its own special interest to it. So that will add just enough interest. Without drawing too much attention to it. Also, you can't do this. It loses the whole. This is where it takes a little while to do the whole thing. And this is, I depend on just looking at it and it tells me a little bit of what it means. It's not purely arbitrary. You know what I found out about painting? When I first started teaching, uh, a class I had to teach was one called Exploring Art. It was a lecture class. And I got the textbook and I got to the chapter on color. And they had a whole chapter on color, color theories and all that stuff, the you know, color wheel, and then value. And they had two paragraphs. Where's all the information on value? And so I got another textbook. I started ordering them from different companies, and they were all the same. It's like they copy each other. And none of them had any good information about value. But if I went in and looked at books by artists, they had a whole chapter or sometimes two on values. So, so where are they going to be? They got a degree in art. Maybe they're like the, yeah, the, we had a dean or a vice president called a vice president for instruction. A vice president for instruction, he had a 
doctorate degree in educational administration, whatever the heck that is. And he had never taught a class in his life. And he was the vice president for instruction. Something pretty cockeyed about that. Now see, that looks too dark. So I want to sit in and just be a crack in the rock. I don't want it to take the place of the rock. So I keep a towel handy so that I can do a few little things with this. Even if you put the same value for some textual variations, it'll be darker than what's there because it's now two layers. Uh, now, at the point where you become totally bored with this, you tell me and we'll quit. I'm going to take that as this water. I'm going to lift it out. And then right above that, I'll put a little darker light. Because I've noticed that light falls down the surface, even the shadow surface. The light just comes from above and it falls down and it hits the, just the lip of the crack. And so there'll be the dark crack and a little light, not, it's not completely all the way and be broken up the edge. And then there's a gray value, then the dark crack, then the light, and then, oh, that's interesting. So I did that on some painting and voila, it worked. It looked right. So that's my whole thing today. You think it will look right. Especially in this area. That's where I want to know. If I put a crack in that, rub it in hard, and then just a little darker right above it. Too dark. There. Perfect. Just right. Now, what do I do about this? This and this. Me. And the only thing I can think to do is, is solve with value. So I'm going to turn that to this. I go a little darker here. That'll now visually tie in with this. And I can I don't want it to look like spatter. I don't mind techniques like that, you know, but I don't want it to be so identifiable. But, oh, spatter. Did you use salt? Squinting tells me the pieces of light that need to be knocked down. Oh, 
okay, that's better. But I just just really need to turn around a little more. Horizontally, until it hits the water's edge. Steve Fuller, Homo, Richardson, Richardson Professional 7010 series. That is a really good book. Finally found one that would satisfy my needs, which is this. Got to be fat through there. From this side to that side, it's got to be thick enough to hold plenty of water. And it's got to be long enough to hold water. So many of them, they, they make it look really good. Yeah, and it comes to a chisel edge. Right, that's because half the hairs are there. They've squashed this in here and they put fewer hairs and then they make it this short. So I've tried all kinds of them and this is the best one I've found. This is a one inch brush, supposedly, but it's a little older. I checked it against the one inch brush I have. This is the same brush in a three quarter inch. Richardson. Richardson series 7010. 10. Superb brush. And as I squint at that, I say, wow, these are certainly catching a lot of attention, aren't they? So even though I've left those on purpose. It's time to get rid of them. Not that white down. And they won't seem part of that. You know, you're the uh, you're the choir director here, and if you've got somebody that's trying to be a soloist, it shouldn't be. This is my soul, my soloist up here, and if these are singing too loudly, even if she's got a really nice voice, I still have to either tell it here. Either you quiet down and join the rest of the choir, or you're out. Which means you have to be a little ruthless. Maybe, maybe some of those need to go down even further. So I've got this really nice little. Why don't I just make it call out something else? Yeah. You can leave, but if you don't leave any lights, you won't have any, so you have to leave some. I want that not down there just a bit too so that we can build here, dance up through there, and get that. That's what I want to have happen. And there's always some things you hadn't planned on. There's something up there that um, I have to turn into a bird. I don't know why I'm just. I'd actually plan on that sky being a little darker. But 
Well, I can't right now because I just got to start. Five minutes. Okay, any questions? Uh, how often do you uh, replace the question? I won't have to replace that one. I won't have that one. Realistically, I mean, I'm 78 now. 70, no, I'm going to be 70 in June. So that'll last another 30 years, but I don't think I'll be here 30 years. So, uh, good brushes like that, like these flats, will last a long time. These pointed brushes, Different. That's got a really fine tip to it. I uh, love that. It's a nice brush. But as soon as the tip wears out, then uh, it's time to give it to the grandkids. But what I want it for is to be able to come down there and, and do a really fine line like this with a brush that big. Or press down and get a better one. Great tool, but as soon as that tip's gone, it won't do that anymore. You're kind of scrubbing with a dull, like trying to cut bread with a dull knife. Trying to replace the knife, not the bread. And so I find that the pointed brushes like those, I bought a bunch of these when I found out they don't have production. And, uh, but I'm on the last of them. But, but this seems to be a really good substitute, this uh, Princeton. Yeah, nice tip. And normally the amount of painting I do, this. Those pointed brushes will last um, two or three months. But the nice thing is they don't cost a fortune. So it used to be when I started painting, uh, the only good pointed brushes were, were uh, sable. And, you know, so it, the tip would run out and go throw it away. Just couldn't let go of it. Now nine dollars. That's I got nine dollars four thousand in three months. And that's you. That was a long-winded answer. All right. Any other questions? I'll do a little more on this tonight. There's nothing good on TV. <laughs> Any one last question? Yeah. I have one. I have one. Yeah. Those uh, local for sale brushes are now being made by another company that is called King Art, and it's very great sound. Oh. And uh, they have a King Art. Yeah, but they don't have a number eight. Okay, for another. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Series nine thousand. Good, okay. Got okay. One last question over here. Carl, Carl, if you want to make your paint balls in your own house, I mean, are you laying them down and keeping the lid on? Or yeah, I sprayed them and then I sprayed them before I, I, they were dry when I came up here, but I sprayed them an hour before. Okay. <laughs> I did the plug for the society. That's what I wanted to do. Because if you really, I admire what they do. I heard them back there planning all the stuff that you guys are doing. It's amazing. <coughs> I'm not very good at planning stuff like that. Neither are we. Could you hold that up for the kids too? Oh, it, 
They didn't see it. You mean they just saw me? No, they saw it, but I just wanted them to see the final thing. Looks a little washed out there, but I don't know. Uh, you see that on the zoom? Oh, can you see it right you there? know, if you hold it under the camera, you can see it. Yeah. You want to write that up? And I, can you can you switch it so that it goes back to the phone? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And if you could turn it around, because it's upside down right now. <laughs> Perfect. Got it. Like Thanks. That? Yep. Great. Thank you. All right. That's good. Thank you again. Oh, by the way, yeah, go ahead. Uh, by the way, I. I think one of the most fascinating things for me is to see other artists yeah. sketchbooks. Oh, that's brilliant. So I brought a couple of sketchbooks if you want to come to them. Oh, you know, I just I don't have any more right now. I've got to work. You know, for a long time, I didn't even miss it. Uh, well, the, the publisher went bankrupt. That ended up being publication, and I probably contacted him. I was like, "Oh, somebody has to do something about it." I was like, "Well, I'm going to 